first day of training camp. Yeah. AI. Hain worked out all awesome. summer. Five shots at five spots, and he's AI. Now he's beginning of Paul George. <laughs> and I check in the game like on, on like a suicide mission, like get him, Tay. Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Podcast P presented by Prize Picks, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original. As you all may know, we are shooting this early. We have a long East Coast trip, thanks to the Grammys. So they booted us out. So with that said, we are introducing something new to the show called Story Mode. Here, we're gonna dive into some of the most notable and iconic moments in our game of basketball. And we're gonna do it with our very own OGs in the game, right? With us today is one of my OGs, my vet from Indiana, now with us with the LA Clippers, my dog, Dante Jones. <laughs> Peace, 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 man. What's up, dog? Nah, man, I'm chilling, man. Oh, don't, don't come I, here with that shy shit, man. It, 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 there's no <laughs> sexy voice you, you and shit. You know there's no shy me, and I am. <laughs> this is our first coach on the, on the show, huh? Oh, big shout first out. Coach. First, first coach. coach. I appreciate y'all having First coach on podcast. And y'all, uh, where you was born? I've been, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, me and Dante been knowing each other for a long yeah, time. Yeah, man, okay. we've been in the streets yeah, together, we've been man. in the streets together. We, I done been around. I know how this man is. Yes. <laughs> yes. He, I'm just yeah. trying to, you know, we close to age. Yeah, 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 yeah. we close to age. Oh, okay, yeah, we, we twins. I'm 42, 81, baby. 42? Okay. October right. 23rd. You 42? So. I'm 43. Oh, mm -hmm. I just yeah. turned 43. You would know if you got me a birthday gift. Yes. I appreciate you. Yeah. 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 My bad. Be with these little birthday young came in bucks. December. You ain't give me nothing. It's cool though. My bad. Little young whippersnappers. Uh, let's let's just dive right into it. Let's dive right into it. Right. Here we love the origin of, of our guests and, and how they came about, right? Paint the picture. It's February of 20, uh, 2003. Y'all playing Virginia. You getting double team. You split the double. You punch on the, on the low man. All right. You hit about four, I counted, it's about four push ups. Right. Right? Popped up, flex. Walk us through that play. It's 21 years ago. Okay, I, I remember like it was yesterday <laughs> yeah. too, right? It's 21, you ain't gotta what, keep going to 21 at me. It's cool though. <laughs> but um, I was 12 for reference. We, <laughs> we were, it was a it was a snowstorm. It took us mad long to get to Virginia. We we busted. It took us like twice as long as it should have. Not too many people in the crowd, so we playing that game in the, in the middle of the winter. Um, first Virginia, um, and they were really good at that time. Mm -hmm. But Coach K was destroying me in that in that timeout. And he just didn't like my effort level and what what have you. Just being a coach, he, mm -hmm. was, he was right. Mm -hmm. So it was limited amount of time coming out that the ATO and they trapped me and I split it and I like, it was like a three, two, one. So I had no choice but to like, just throw it in, try try and dunk it to mm -hmm. beat the clock. I catch it, boom, amazed myself, hit to the floor and the pushups was like a F you to Coach K. Mm -hmm. Like I was looking at him like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then he accepted like, like hell yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I was like, oh, it didn't work. Cause I got another better dunk than that, yeah, that yeah. game, but I was trying to like, like F you to K on that one. Cause he was talking, he'd been talking crazy to me. Yeah. Like, he's one of the best motivators of all time, but like he knew as a coach that he could speak to, to me, get me going crazy and it would speak to the other That would players. translate to everybody so, like, else. So he could, and, and I wasn't sensitive. So, yeah. So he, he destroyed me and then I came out there like, all right, I got you. And so that was, so that, so, so it, it sucks for the dude that was, yeah. that took that. I took my frustration out of him, and it wasn't fair, and it like had nothing to do with him. But and he landed on top on my on my, my feet. Yeah. So as I tried to get up, he was still on me. So then I just kept it going. Like, cause Kate, Kate didn't like, Kate really didn't like like um like celebrations and stuff. Yeah. So it just but it was. Yeah, I was gonna. He couldn't say nothing at that point. I was gonna follow that up with. Did you guys have a conversation after that? Like, did he mention the push ups? Did you guys talk about that? Like, did he know that those push ups were for him? It, as long as he got his message across, and 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 we were still, and we started because. At that point in time, or just over my college career period, like we most hated team in basketball. Mm -hmm. And like you gotta when you when you hate it, you have to come out with a mindset every game and be ready to play. And we just as kids, we weren't we weren't ready. Mm -hmm. So as long as we it translated to what he needed to do, he didn't care. He cared about winning more than anything. Mm -hmm. And he he got an edge to him that people don't really don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like he's he's not like a straight lace as many people think. He's 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 a ultra competitive man and doesn't really care about much except winning. Hmm. That's gangster. I think the most impressive thing about it was was the hair, the lineup. Yeah, I told you I had that. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I mean, I had that. I had that. I had that when I was playing with you. I had it full, was full head of hair. It was like that. Because yeah, okay. I was in like my pretty boy phase. Like I had waves and all that, man. Like I just yeah. now I don't care no more about yeah. nothing. 
So I had my do rag and I don't really feel like doing all that. We want to take a brief break from the episode to let you guys know that Prize Picks has got you covered when it comes to helping you make some money during the NBA season. That's right. And you already know Prize Picks is helping me cash in. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app. And with the NBA season in full swing, you can select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and turn $25 into $250. Prize Picks is really simple to play, y'all. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. That easy. It's also that time of the year where many sports are happening at the same time. And of course, Prize Picks allows you to pick combo projections across football and basketball with specials so you can support all your teams while still cashing in. Well, I know for me, I've been cashing in. <laughs> I don't know about you, Dallas, but we'll get to that on another time. But make sure y'all go visit prizepicks.com slash podcast P and use code podcast P for a first deposit matchup to $100. And y'all already know what time it is. Cha-ching! I want to touch on what you just said about Coach K. Like many people kind of view him as like super disciplined, but you just kind of alluded to the fact that he's super competitive. Did that like, I'm curious on like what your practices were like. Was like he a coach that had you more so doing drills or were there more so drills that sparked competitiveness within the practice? Like what kind of coach was he in your guys' practice? He was ahead of his time. So he's kind of like, and this is why I think T. Lou is like, one of those ones because he is, he's just like T. Lou. It's, it's really no difference. It's just the way he speaks to us is not like he doesn't talk down to his players. He communicates. Mm-hmm. And that's a big thing as a player to coach. Like he's talking to us like, like we're all on the same team, number one. He is disciplined, but like it's a time and place for everything. Practices were like 30, 45 minutes. You got that much, you got that much um, talent on your team. He let us play. Mm-hmm. And I, we, we had like six, seven plays. We didn't have like a, a hundred plays to where we had to run thing. No, we knew what our strengths and weaknesses. He wanted you to play like the way that, that what got you there. And then you run your motion offense and, and you play at a certain speed and set at a certain um, level of, uh, of um, competitiveness, but just play within yourself. And he wanted us to compete every practice. So mm-hmm. we practiced 45 minutes. Like it, it wasn't like two, three yeah, hours real, of practice. Okay. Nah, yeah. he, he wanted us to get in there and compete and just get up and down because he felt that was the the best way yeah. to, to get better. I obviously, you know, got a glimpse of that with with Team USA stuff, mm-hmm. but he was I he was the best like communicator, motivator. Mm-hmm. Like before we play a matchup, like he'll literally have you like, Dead. foaming at the mouth, like ready Listen, to go, man. like let's go, let's hoop. Like he'll have you in that mindset to to just go out and just dominate. Right. You and Jay Williams was close growing up, and y'all played together while at Duke. To the younger generation and the young crowd who sees him as an analyst, mm-hmm. not necessarily knowing him talk. as the basketball player, talk to us about like what you saw from him as a basketball player because he was he, it was it he was it he was it, he was it. He I was remember it. him and it was it was crazy because I remembered him when he was coming out when he entered it and I didn't know at the time he had dealt with that that motorcycle uh, accident but then I just. It was he was nowhere to be found again. I was like, damn, where's this dude that was at Duke? He was so nice. As I, you know, watched and, and looked into it more, I saw that he had the accident. That's the reason why he didn't play. So, but to give you an idea of it, like you saw what Wimby did in the draft right now, right? Mm-hmm. So like the seven seven, like you can't, you have no choice but to take him. That was Yao. The guy the guy from China, like fully dominant, ready to play right now, gonna change the way the NBA is, is, is as, a, as a game globally, so mm-hmm. now you get the Chinese market. So, like, he was going to be the number one pick, but the kid out of Alabama, Brandon, Brandon, Miller. Miller. Brandon Miller. So, like, he dominated college basketball. He was he was better than that. Right. Like, he 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 was Mr. College Basketball. He right. could have came out and went top five the year before when we won a national championship. He comes back to, 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 like, do something and be a back-to-back national champion. So he was, like, the guy in college basketball, not only the year before, but came back that year Cover of Sports Illustrated, like he was fast, he was athletic, he was six one, but like a throw it on you. Mm-hmm. He had NBA range, um, had a handle, mm-hmm. can get anything he wanted to. Mid range pull up, like, and would defend. Mm-hmm. So like he was a he was an NBA team's like dream, and he got out there, and I guess Yao just the worldwide stage that Yao put the Rockets on, like that's the only thing that overshadowed him. Mm-hmm. Like he 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 was it, and I saw him as a kid. And I just got to see how, like, when he got to Duke and, like, just what he, – he kept working and growing. He was my roommate in college. And 
he just just grew as a basketball player. Got stronger, got even faster, got more athletic. Mm-hmm. The kid was number one point guard in the country then, but then like he just kept it just kept coming with the stage that Duke put some put put you on as a player. Like it was it was it was amazing to watch. Yeah, who would you who would you compare him to? Like NBA current NBA player. Tough, but the kid Scoot. Scoot, oh. Scoot, Scoot the might be an look, inch yeah. and a half taller than him. Yeah, but he's like Scoot. Yeah, yeah. fast, strong. Like you have that toughness. Yeah, and yeah. Then, then then he had that year before where he played against the USA team and went dead at Gary Payton mm-hmm. and called like the glove the mitten, <laughs> all that right. <laughs> like, he was wild though. He didn't, he didn't care. Like he, he was he was aggressive. He could score and he could score in bunches. Even going to Maryland games where he just put points on the board. Like it was nobody doing what he was doing. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, like like kind of a smaller. An inch or two smaller version of Scoop that, cool. that could like really shoot it and score. Yeah. So you're out of Duke, right? Now we're transitioning to the NBA. You learned the business of basketball early. Back. Drafted by Boston, traded to Memphis. Four seasons there. During your rookie year, you don't play, right? First month in. Finally get a chance to play and you're thrown into the fire, right? So your origin is a defender at this mm-hmm. at this moment, right? And you're thrown in to play against the Sonics. Your matchup is Ray Allen and Flip Murray. Man. Talk to us about that. Listen, and the fact that y'all even, y'all even brought Flip Murray's name up, it's like. Flip, Flip was a problem. Flip was like what on a level with Ray. Like yeah. he was one of, one of them tears. Like yeah. One of them Jeremy Lin tears or one of them. Who's, who, who's, who's on a tear right now that you got to look at him and, and like you, you, got, you got a tough night coming. And we, I could, mean, shit. That's Cam it, Thomas. It, yeah, Cam Thomas. <laughs> Cam like, Thomas. Yeah, Cam, yeah, yeah, Bro, Cam Thomas. Terry, switches like, everything. Like he can, he can go. Not only so you got to put your best defender on because most teams only got one defender mm-hmm. on, on, on ball defender. You got to put him on Ray because Ray is Ray. Mm-hmm. And then he's just like he's another scoring point guard, big six four. Like he, he could do a whole lot of things. You, he, he's a, he's a matchup nightmare. And I'm at that point in time, I'm playing behind James Posey, Mike Miller, uh, the Bonzi Wells. Um, who else? Shane Battier. Mm-hmm. Guys got in foul trouble, and UB looked down and was like, "Yeah, come on, young fella, you compete." And I'm like, <laughs> like "Me? Me? <laughs> okay, but well, I'm with whatever." Yeah. So all I, I know, I can defend if anything. So I yeah. got in there and I kind of held him to to some tough shots, and he didn't see it coming. And most scores don't like physicality, so that's just what I enjoy. Period. And I and I I got my first breath of that, and I was like, "All right," because I, I played with like Earl Watson, who's mm-hmm. half crazy too. So mm-hmm. like. He was like, "Come on, we, this, this is what we do." And he yeah. kind of gassed me up, and, <laughs> and we and we got through it. And 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 that's as you know, your first NBA game is like, I'm really out here, and I'm not really out here. With, at that point in time, my idols were like MJ, all the shoot, shooting guards that were good. MJ, Ray Allen, Kobe. Those are the guys that I looked up to. Mm-hmm. And then your first game is against one of them, and it's like, oh man, yeah. Like, uh, it's all I know how to do is compete. Yeah. So competed, got some stops. And found out like, oh, I, I'm, I belong here a little bit. Yeah. So in uh, July of 2008, you signed with the Denver Nuggets and a squad at the time that had Melo and Allen Iverson. And so I'm sure you were probably super pumped to go play with them. But shortly after arriving, uh, Chauncey Billups gets traded in exchange for Allen Iverson. But with that short time that you did have with Allen Iverson, did you get to develop any type of relationship or maybe have a good story with them either on the court or off the court with AI? So I, um, I went to summer league with the, um, with the Nuggets because the Nuggets wanted to audition me and another dude and we're like, listen, we, we were going back and forth contractually and they were like, y'all two fight it out in summer league. And you know, I'm with whatever. So I was like, all right, cool. It's my fifth year, but so what? I go to summer league. I'll play him. I go from summer league and me and JR went back to Denver. So I was like, I'm gonna go there early and get ready. I'm like, the f- I'm, I'm Slated to be like the 14th, 15th man, but I'm just need any opportunity just to get in the window mm-hmm. and I, I want to compete. And JR took me to um, Dave and Buster's. Like, we're gonna go see my man real fast. Dave and Buster's, six o'clock. We get into Dave and Buster's and AI playing shuffleboard with his homies at six. And he's like, yo, what up, Tay? Now, mind you, I'm playing against AI in the, in the league and stuff, but. AI is like the rock star of all. He's like mm. the John Morant. Like right. he, it ain't nobody bigger than him. Cold, but like he's outside too. Mm-hmm. So like the he's the people's champ, super nice, got all the accolades. And he in the middle of David Buster's playing shuffleboard, like no security. Mm-hmm. Like people know him. That's what he do. He playing shuffleboard with the homies. He take that, go play pool with the homies. He we he take that and we go out. He AI, you know AI. 
party all night long, <laughs> order 25 bottles of Don P. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get drunk, they carry him out. We talking like in the summer lease, it's like uh, July-ish. Yeah. He so goes, it's early into the summer. So right. So so he get he, he get hammered and yo, I'm gonna meet you, meet you at practice. What time y'all going? Eleven. I AI. All right, Chuck. Um, don't show up. Every day we do that all summer long. <laughs> <laughs> Young fellas, I'm gonna be there. What time y'all going? Eleven o'clock. Don't show up. Chuck Net, we party every night. Yeah. But we show up and cause we we weren't drinking. Yeah. So training camp. He did that to us every night. Training camp show up. Chuck come in there. Come in here like right on time. Do like a little hamstring stretch, like one of these. Get the get the uh, one of the interns like, five shots at five spots, and he's AI. First day of training, right, yeah. AI. He ain't worked out all, all summer. summer. That's crazy. He's the AI we know and love. He in there flying through, finishing mid range three. You can't guard him. He ain't touched the ball all summer. Yeah, we go through training camp. AI, like he just had it. Yeah, that's and crazy. Then, even like we did preseason games. Every every city we go to, but to Syracuse, rock star, like biggest party you ever seen after the game. He lived like a rock star. He played like a rock star. He played every night. He played the summer league games. I mean, um, the preseason games too. Mm -hmm. And he just like he he got after it. So I got the first couple of games with AI, and he was one of like my childhood like that got me into basketball at mm -hmm. Georgetown. Like it wasn't nobody really really bigger. And so I got I'm I'm just. I'm living the moment, like, bro, you sit next to AI. Melo was my man already. We was in the same draft. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. We trade him, and then Big Shot, my big homie, we traded for, my, for the big homie. So, what's up? Because we mm -hmm. trained together in, uh, in Vegas. So, okay. Big Shot, me. So, y'all had a yeah, relationship we, like, I've been already. I've training with Big Shot for like six, seven years since I was in, at Duke. Big Shot come in, and they said they wanted to start somebody else. Big Shot was like, nah, I want Dante. I want, he's going to guard. Like, I want, to comp I want Dante in the starting lineup. And that's how I get there. I mm -hmm. go from being a 14, 15 man, the big shot said like, yo, I need him to start. So I went from that to, we in the conference finals, like this. Mm -hmm. I went from summer league to the conference finals. Like when I blink, that's we in the crazy. conference finals playing against Kobe. Mm -hmm. So like that's so now as a coach, like, and when I'm talking to like the young dudes with our team that may not get the opportunity they want to, like the way this league work, it changes. It changed for you like that. Right. Like it changes, it Literally. can change on you fast. You just gotta be prepared. So like you, you never know what transaction might happen, who might go down. You just gotta be prepared and your life can change like this. And mm -hmm. after that, now, you, now you, when you're in a conference final, you're on the world stage, as you know, everybody know your name, changes your whole trajectory of, of basketball at that point. Mm -hmm. Speak, speaking of that, that uh, Kobe Western finals, mm -hmm. when y'all had uh, him and Melo both going at it, mm -hmm. I just want to ask you because you kind of you already talked about Kobe, but tell me what's the most thing you remember about Kobe during that that uh, Western Finals? This he it just he was a dog and he was relentless and his mental approach to the game. Like we played that year and he just he knew my minute structure, so he had watched film enough to know that George Carl only played me the first six minutes of the first and the first six minutes of the third, and it could get tricky for me. I'm not gonna play no fourth quarters because George wouldn't play. Um, a Duke guy in the fourth quarter, he told me that to my face. Like, <laughs> you with the Duke, I'm with UNC, I don't really mess with y'all, but you my favorite, but you're not gonna play no fourths for me. So he knew my minute structure to the point where he would just facilitate. He ain't gonna deal with no physicality. Mm -hmm. He wasn't gonna wrestle with me or get, get no, get no, no, didn't talk, didn't talk, no, didn't talk, no trash, didn't say nothing crazy. He would just facilitate. Was you talk, was you talking to him? No, because. <laughs> okay. you, wasn't, you wasn't even trying to. No, that, he was it for me. Like yeah. MJ, Cole, Ray Allen, as I said, <laughs> AI. Like those, those are my four. I'm playing hard as I can because that's how you show your respect to the people that you admire. Like you don't, I'm never going to back down. So right. I, I wanted him, I wanted to get his approval as like, as a competitor. Right. So. No, he did, we did, we never he never said anything ill to me. He never like we never talked crazy to each other. Um, both he was physical. He competed. When he when when I went out the game, then he would go at Jr. and Anthony Carter. And then when I came back, he would pick his moments and stuff. But he would never like fully attack mm -hmm. because he knew like that's what I was only there for. Mm -hmm. What was the? Because I remember those battles and those games were fun growing up a Lakers fan. But I want to know what the scouting report like. How did you prepare for Kobe? Like, was there a scouting report or was it just, hey, go out there and try your best? Um, there was a scouting report. About the same. What was it? Yeah, like, what, what was like, his what, weaknesses? Yeah, what, yeah, what, what, what were you Kobe. trying to make? How well, were you trying to win that battle? Every player has a rhythm, right? And mm -hmm. they have go-tos. And as you said, he has like, he has favorite moves and he has counters. So to be physical with him, to not let him get to his spot, 
to um to try and get into his handle a little bit to make him rush um just to make everything hard mm -hmm. and then like most of the stuff you may see from me and why the lakers fans hate me to this day is that you just had to just wear him down because he's going to take a lot of shots he's going to be used a lot so we had we had different rules than we have now so like we had bounties on him and he could not get a layup because my teammates would cuss me out yeah george kenyon uh big shot if he got a layup without me fouling him knowing that i'm only gonna pay 18 minutes or not like i'm going to fully get cussed out yeah so that's why you see me like be ultra aggressive he beat me one time and i, I pushed him and he back but <laughs> that in my mind it wasn't to hurt him it was you the, do the repercussions but no 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> so i didn't get benched no 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 not not to get benched but like the only other option was is to go over, over go for the ball and really hurt him and like take him out the air or just to catch him before he gets off the floor. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just like kind of like, he, he, he's about to take off, push him and he goes out of bounds. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yo, why you, why, what, what you doing? But he don't know that I have to, mm -hmm. <laughs> or I'll get fined. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like if you get a layup, I lose money. Mm -hmm. I get cussed out. They, they, got, they got pictures of me and Chauncey and, and, and Kenyon and uh, Melo arguing because I wasn't physical enough. Mm -hmm. They like they had me like on the leash, and they were just, yeah, like, yeah. just, just <laughs> messing up. Tank. Yeah, and I'm like, all right, people looking at me like I'm crazy minutes, now. Six fouls. I mean, yeah, it makes sense like, now that I think about it. Most of you the dirty are in player. a Denver Nuggets uniform mm -hmm. because that was my role. It worked for everybody. Ken Kenyon, that was Ken that was Kenyon's role. He was like he was the bully. Mm -hmm. He controlled everything. Even he had to guard Dirk. Like he was, he had to get physical, and that was our level of basketball. We're gonna be physical. You, you, we're going to wear people now because Big Shot was coming from Detroit mm -hmm. and I was there. So he gave us an identity. We got our scores. We got our main guy. We got our general. But we're going to be physical. We're going to wear you down. We're going to fly around. We're going to have fun. And, and we're going to talk. We're going to talk crazy. And that, that's just like, that's just what we do. Mm -hmm. So even in that, like, um, and it, it worked. Like for that year, it worked. We had, we had an identity and people were scared to play us. Mm -hmm. So Cole come like. Was dirty. Cole. Uh, <laughs> it's a fine line. Like we are physical. Different game. It's it's a di it's, it's it's a different level of physicality that was allowed. And if we gonna foul you, we are gonna make sure you, you feel it. Like <laughs> like you you, you got to go to the ground. And yeah, they, I, 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 we're, I not, we're not like gonna kick you. Like right. but like if I'm a foul, you, it's not gonna be a, a hand foul. Like yeah. you gonna feel it. You gonna get your free throws. And I'm gonna say I did it. I'm not gonna act like I didn't. Yeah. But, but the intent is for you to be yeah. like, like over time. Do this. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Over time, like, like nah. I had enough. Like, right, I'm stop going to the paint. I'm settle for a couple jumpers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we make you settle, yeah. and then like because the paint was somewhere we did, didn't want you to come. Mm -hmm. You got into the paint. You got to know that you was gonna get foul hard. Or we like we coming. I got Nene behind me. I got Kenyon behind me. Like they trying to block shots, and then we gonna be physical. Our traps physical. Our ball pressure physical. We just wanted to be physical at, at any any point in time we could, and we wore teams down like that. So, like, the stuff with Cole, was physical in his post, yeah. in, into him in the ball, he get in the paint. Like, if I can't make a play, and it was like four or five times where I couldn't really make a play, like, I have to make sure he does not get a shot up. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's where you see some of the stuff come mm -hmm. out. It, like, I, I loved him more, as much as you do, yeah. or any, any other. Like, that was like, he was but the epitome right, of right. basketball. I know Cole is so good at, like, masking, right? Whether y'all was getting to him or not, I know he's so good at like, you know, they'll just warrior mentality. Mm -hmm. Like at any point, was y'all like, yeah, we we got him. We getting him. We getting to <laughs> no. him. <laughs> yeah, there was no was point in time that we got him in the yeah. control. No, by no means. Okay. And me and him had like the same agent. So like I had worked out with Kobe in the summertime. Like most people don't know that. Like I've been in uh, Santa Monica, uh, St. Monica's one on one, him, uh, Corey Maggetti. Like, so I, I know Kobe and I've been competed against Kobe by this time. Mm hmm. And I know he's not gonna give up. Mm -hmm. Like he could have a game where he go 0 for 32. He's coming. Mm -hmm. He's he's gonna keep shooting. He's gonna keep being aggressive. He's gonna keep controlling the game like an like, elephant. Yeah, like he's, you can't really memory. shake him. So never we never thought that we had him rattled by no means. Mm -hmm. We just knew we we had those games to the point we had games one. We made mistakes at the end of the game, mm -hmm. like side out of bounds plays. They get a steal and they win. So we just want to control the game and be the, and be the more physical team. You use the word bounties, and obviously, I think most people who watch the game today, like, it is a different game. Different game. I haven't shared the story in a long time, but my first time going out to Philly to visit Drew, and uh, I was super hyped, like, we're in Philly, and I'm like, I'm trying to go out, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, um, Drew is like, hey, do you have any money? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And he goes, no, 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 come here, come here, come here. And he starts folding out some $100, and he's like, I'm like, bro, like, I don't. 
I don't need your money. He goes, bro, I had like eight deflections today. Like, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is pranks. all my deflection money. Yeah. And you know, Drew, he was probably making killing a it killing off yeah. these little, what other incentives do you guys have? That used to be a thing charge? in Indy. Yeah, yeah in the deflections, deflections. It depends on what, co what your coach values. So like when I was in Memphis, Hubie Brown had the game broken down as a mathematician. He was a math teacher by, by, by trade before he became a basketball coach. So he was like, if you get a certain amount of deflections, certain amount of assists, um, like he had the numbers to get. So they would incentivize us to get deflections. Like you got people just trying to get a hand on the ball. If you get 20 deflections, you win 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. So if your coach cares about something like taking charges or deflections or paint points, then you start like just throwing little team like pop money. And ours was like hard fouls, um, <laughs> charges. It. Charges is one of them. So I like, I took a lot of charges too. Um, you get a hundred off for a charge. Um, they, I'm, my team is, my coach is gonna pay all my um, flagrant ones. And if I get in a, in, in a point in time where I don't take a hard foul, I get fined. So if you had an opportunity where you could, it's, it's like when we say, um, when it was a bad free throw shooter, right? And it's a, it's a big, it's a bad free throw shooter. And he shoots 30% from the line and you let him get a dunk off. Like that's, that's bad basketball. Mm -hmm. like, he's gonna mm -hmm. miss those free throws. So just take the foul. Mm -hmm. So if I get a situation where I don't get a chance to, to to use one of my hard fouls on their best player, I'm getting fined. Mm -hmm. And if I get one, and even if, even if they know I'm not gonna like, they knew I wasn't gonna like hurt nobody, but if I take one, I'm only gonna pay my fine, I get $1,000. That's how, that, that's, that's, that's how, good coaching oh, though. But that got us to the to conference be honest, that's finals. that's good coaching. Yeah, you no, can't I mean, do that no more, so mind you. Yeah. It got us to the conference finals. Like nobody would come in our paint. We played the, the Mavericks, and I think Kenyon slammed Dirk on the first possession, like boom, Dirk. Picked himself up and was like, I don't, don't want to play no more. Like, he's too wild. Yeah. Like, a hundred more dollars, too. <laughs> and Kenya, like, yeah, with my hundred dollars. Like, <laughs> like, like, that was our identity. And yeah. it got us through um, two, it got us to the conference finals that we played um, Chris Paul and the Hornets. Like, Chris, Chris didn't speak to me like two, three years. Man, Chris was cool. Mm -hmm. We, we blitzing Chris, we trapping him off the pick and roll. It's me and Kenyon, it's six nine and six six, and he trying to throw over us, and we, our game plan was to be physical on our traps. Mm -hmm. So as the ball's going that way, you got to just hit, keep hitting on Chris. Mm -hmm. Hit on Chris, hit on Chris. Because once Chris goes away, they have no other offense. Mm -hmm. And then Chris just didn't want to bring the ball up no more. Like all their plays was, was pick and rolls. Mm -hmm. And then Chris got to the point was like, man, God rest his soul, Rasul Butler, you bring it up. Mm -hmm. Rasul. And now Rasul Butler is the point guard. Mm -hmm. And it's like, nah. Right. <laughs> nah right. it's, 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 offense the, the machine already. doesn't work the same way. Right. So yeah, so like that's just was our brand of basketball. As I said, he came from the Pistons. You got Rasheed Wallace, um, yeah, Ben Wallace, um, Tayshawn Prince flying around. They were physical. They protected their paint. If you, even now, when a team, first a team gets in the paint rather than when they don't, like it changes the whole outlook of the game. Yeah. And we didn't want nobody to even think that they could get there and get, and get a layup yeah. uncontested. Do you miss that? Like now seeing where the game is today and it's a lot more offensively heavy. You miss that brand of basketball where it was just defensive minded and. I, I grew up on it. Like I, I grew up watching the yeah. Bulls and, and the Knicks. And like, I grew up watching physical basketball. Um, I wouldn't say it's not physical now. And 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 you you play in this era more than I do, but I still see a level of physicality. It's just that they took out the intentional hard foul. Mm -hmm. that, that might be better for for, for the game, but mm -hmm. like if a guy goes to if Steph Curry goes to the lane and you just know that he's not as big as everybody else and he has he's injury prone at times, put him down. Like that was like a thing. Mm -hmm. Put him down. Use one of your fouls. Like. Try and block it, but also try and be physical with them too. Mm -hmm. That's just what it was. It slowly moved out of there, so I got a chance to be a part of like super physical, and then they tried to like taper it off. And mm -hmm. but also when I first came in the league, like you could scrap, yeah. like not, not all this talking we doing, like what throwing hands, yeah. <laughs> like that they you just start the fighting and then it's just attack. The first year, my first year, the thing was to kick the ball in the stands. So Jay Will and Bonzi Wells, they just kick Bonzie it. Wells. Like they don't like the call. They just kick the ball. That was just, that was just a like, tech. Oh, here he go again. Yeah. This is a tech. And then they go get the ball and they bring it back. Like that, that, that's what it was. It was different. They bring that back. Yeah. Like she, they, like, they it's just a couple take basketballs out of booted. That was why Jay say, Will, Bonzi, and James Posey was known for kicking that joint in the stands. Yeah. What it was. So after the Western Conference Finals run, you sign a four-year deal with the Indiana Pacers. 
and you get connected with this guy Paul George uh, a year later. Man. But when when Paul first came to Indiana, I want to know what you saw in him as a player, and did you ever envision him uh, becoming the superstar he is today? I saw nothing in Paul George. Paul George was six nine, one hundred and seventy. Five pounds. <laughs> At, on sight, you see nothing in Paul George. I think he was smaller. He might he be said, smaller. What'd you say he was? I got I Paul was, George and Lance Stevenson. And I'm like, I'm 30 years old. And I'm like, come on, man. Like, bro, we, I'm, I'm, I'm a part of a rebuild project. And I got, <laughs> oh I got Danny Granger, who's nuts. And he, all he want to do is score. <laughs> so like, all right, cool. So these two young kids, though, but first day of practice, I swung on Lance. Yeah, off the break, and they implemented a twenty five thousand dollars fine rule for any punch <laughs> because Lance, we just, we just competed, and Lance was didn't didn't did, had never seen somebody play that hard defensively or deny him the ball. So his only thing was like just to throw elbow in yeah. your face, and I swung, and he knew it what it wasn't the game anymore. So those <laughs> th those two came in like not bright eyed, bushy tail, like we in the league and they thought everything was sweet. And I'm 29 years old, I'm 29, 30 years old. Like, yo, like I got a family. Like I'm, these, little, these little young kids, they're gonna take off my plate. Mm -hmm. But we had the same agent at the time. And he was like, man, just take care of my guy. One thing that I did see in PG and I like, and I can implement to my kids and just even in my personal life. From the door, he would say, even at 6'9", 170 pounds, give me three years, I'm gonna be an NBA All-Star. I was like, bro, you gotta gain like 40 pounds. <laughs> you gotta play like 40 pounds and you might have a shot. But he had in his mind, like he was doing things like that I never even thought of. He would show me highlights of himself working out and implementing stuff with Kobe on his laptop that he would like place his laptop and be in a gym by himself and record himself doing dunks and the different stuff. And I'm mm -hmm. like, yo, how, like, how do you even, <laughs> like, what, are, what are you doing? But his mind was already where he wanted to be. And that's where you find like successful people in life. Like no matter what, no matter what you think you are, other people just don't see your vision, right? And he was saying he was gonna be an all-star. Me personally, I, I had to change the way I talk to my kids, like even my, my son Tanner, PG, you know, like bro, it's not good enough to be an NBA player. Like you gotta see yourself as the best to ever do it or an all-star or whatever, because at that point in time, you start chasing it. And he was chasing that no matter what the situation was, it wasn't primed for him to be an NBA an All-Star in Indy. But he, he's, his, his mindset and his work ethic helped him for when the time came, he was prepared. So every day after practice, mm -hmm. let's play some ones. I'm not playing the ones with you, man. Like, yo, bro, I'm tired. Nah, we're gonna play some ones. And he would get beat every day during that year. Like he wasn't, he didn't get no wins no matter what he's telling you right now. He wasn't getting no wins. <laughs> no wins, I, I, no wins but I keep it 100, I keep it 100. Cause I was, I was bigger, stronger, like, and I had, my mind was different ways, but me, him, Danny Granger play ones. And he would take his L's, but then he would ask questions after. Like, bro, how you guard, like, how you guard like that? He just wouldn't just take his L's and just, just be mad. <laughs> he was trying to learn defensively. And then he started, over that year, he started growing as a defender. He was a shooter by trade at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So he started growing with like the defensive intricacies. So he was he was picking up a master's class in it's just ones mm -hmm. on defense, how to be physical. He got Derrick Rose in a, in a playoff series. Like, bro, what do I do? He would ask questions. Mm -hmm. And that's just not like, a lot of people are so, a lot of men are so like macho, like don't feel like they get, they got it. They, he, was, he was asking questions left and right, scoring wise, what you see, how do you defend them? Like, just show me, please help me. He would ask for help. Mm -hmm. And then that helped him with his work ethic. Like he goes out of that year, and then like handle, like, yo, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta improve that. All right, I know a guy, Jerry Powell, throw him. He spent a summer with Jerry Powell, come back with a handle, like, and, and ISO moves and stuff like that. Like he was his, so his work ethic and his mindset, those two combined, that's why, that's how you get mm -hmm. the man that we know today. I tell, I tell people every time I tell that story uh, about me, me being an all-star in three years, whole locker room busts out laughing. Yeah, they laughing at him. We Everybody laughing like, at him. No bullshit, like he was, in no, tears, but like Darren Collins right here. He told us. He, <laughs> Three years, yeah, come on, cuz oh, yeah. come on, no, cuz no. He was getting smacked though, like he was getting, we playing ones and he getting destroyed and he was like, all right, all right, watch, watch, yeah. watch. Give me three years, I'm gonna be all star. Yeah, I right. <laughs> get a win first. Like we talking crazy to it. All right, like not 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 tears in his eyes, but he mad. Yeah. He like I'm a, I'm gonna be an all star in three years. But watch. It, but in my eyes, like so the I think the the best thing that happened for me was to get drafted with Lance. Mm -hmm. Cause I had, 
I didn't have Lance mindset mm-hmm. to be ready to hoop now. Like Lance had the mindset that like I'm ready to to go at anybody I can play <laughs> right now. Like anybody could get fuck it. whoever ahead of me. Like <laughs> <laughs> I, I should be playing right now. Like he had that mentality, and that was different for me. Like right. I, I came from a system of like basically you wait your turn. That's mm-hmm. how I was in high school. Like I was super talented, but I knew I had guys older than me, so I deferred a lot to them. Mm-hmm. Like. I know my time ain't here yet. Like, let me, you know, I might have a shot. Or let me try to make an extra play for somebody else. Like, that was just my mentality as a, even in high school. So, to now be paired up with Lance, who has this aggressive mindset. Ultra confidence. Little, little ultra sick. confidence. Like, and that's my sparring partner literally every day. Like, he wasn't even beating Lance. So, like, and let's keep it a buck. Lance would talk crazy to him. Lance would try and get into ones. Lance only go right. But... Lance would take some L's, but yeah. Lance would get, get a lot of wins too because he was strong. Yeah, and Lance was a hundred percent more was, polished than me. He was at the bottom mm-hmm. of the like the, the the of the wings, but he was six nine. He could really shoot it, and he would not back down. So like he knew he he take his losses, but Lance is like was so ultra confident. Like yo, ain't nobody in here better than me. Yeah, right, Lance. No, I will play once with anybody. Yeah, uh, play against Cole. Like you ain't better than me. Yeah, like yeah. he just he was <laughs> insanely confident. Yeah. He still to this day is, but that's what you need to be an NBA player. Mm-hmm. And you and, and you know me, what? I hate I do not like losing. Uh, so like yeah. that mindset, I was just like I gotta figure this shit out. Like figure it out. so then I that and then once once I had a little taste of it, like playing a couple games, NBA games, uh, that's where the mentality came. Like all right, I see myself being it. Like f- f- fuck, like and I always thought that like fuck, just making the league. Like mm-hmm. I want to be the one of the best in the league. Yeah. And I saw a glimpse of it when I had my first couple games, first experience, like. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be an all star. Like I, I saw what I can do in this league. But that's, see, and and that and the, that part of it is different. We keep our whole, our mentality in here, right? And no matter what, as men, we decide we want to do. We just afraid to say it. Mm-hmm. So he was saying it, and that's a part of it too. Like even like the young kids I deal with now, or even my own kids. Like, bro, don't be afraid to say what 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 you see yourself as, because then at that point in time, you hold yourself responsible for mm-hmm. it, and. He got laughed at for it, and then now he has to do it. It's not that's the sucker way out of it. If I think I'm gonna be an all star in three years, and I just keep saying it to myself, and and I just I'm just saying, I'm, but but now like I have to really hold myself accountable to it because I said it, and then I got to prove these people because they, now they hold they, they holding me accountable. Mm-hmm. So like saying it, don't be afraid to, to dream it. Number one, but then say it out loud, even when it don't seem like it's coming. Mm-hmm. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. What are some things you want to keep the same about yourself, your life in 2024? Think the opposite of New Year, New You. For me, I think uh, meditation definitely worked in the year 2023, so I'm continuing that in 2024. And um, I think just having a positive outlook on life. What about you, Dallas? Yeah, for me, just staying consistent in the gym and honestly, something I think that's been helping me a lot is just having a better sleep schedule, making sure that I'm getting the proper sleep, cutting the games off on you guys and and make sure that I go to bed. Therapy helps find you strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolution and make changes that really stick. If you're considering starting therapy, try BetterHelp. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out the brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Podcast P today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp. H-E-L-P dot com slash podcast P. Okay, so Dante, I want you to to paint that picture of were you guys in the locker room? Were you on a team bus when Paul came in and and just stated in front of his peers that he was going to be an all-star in three years? Where were you guys? I can't exactly remember, where, but I remember the, the type of scenario it was. And it was either in the locker room or like in an arena sitting on the sideline. He had just took a major set of L's. Like, we had just got done playing ones. He got destroyed. He was talking crazy before that. I'm gonna get this one. He had just and he was mad, like he was sweating, mad in his feelings. And everybody talking. And after you, after we get finished once, everybody talking crazy, mm-hmm. like going over how it happened. And I just blanked you. And you got five zero, and you can't guard me here. And I dunked on him. And they going over, and it was like it, it was at his low. So he was not saying this like mm. just 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 coming through the locker room. I'm gonna be awesome one night. He was. He was getting destroyed 
And he was like, you know what? All right, watch. And give me three years, I'm going to be an all-star. Give me three years. I may not be it right now, mm-hmm. but give me three years, I'm going to be off. Watch. Watch what I tell you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all right. Watch what I tell you. That's hilarious. I, I, I remember it. We were, we were in the locker room, and it was, it was more than just the ones, right? Because you know how competitive the practices was. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think people in, – in Indiana, we practice. Like, mm-hmm. the, the league is a lot different now. Like, you don't practice as much as you do uh, – as we did back then. So, to take you back then, we practice. And our practice was, like, intense where we talking shit. Why squad like <laughs> yeah yeah like we was we was on that type shit like we going against each other like white squad winning today like we talking before practice and so I like I was get if it just wasn't my day like we losing in team ball after we play ones I'm losing I'm getting my ass kicked and you know they motherfuckers they Killing gonna you. carry that shit all the way to the locker room so I'm hearing it in the locker here. room like Ah, we bust your ass today, like white squad. He, he, born. What we do today, born? Like <laughs> and born was hey, 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 hey. taking way too far. Yeah. Like, oh man. So, but they had lost in the white squad in in in, 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 in the middle of practice stuff, and he tried to like get a win again. Like, all right, let's play some ones because I'm gonna get a win somewhere. Yeah. And still didn't get the win. So he really double in his feelings, and he been getting yeah. killed the whole time too. So yeah, that's where that that's that where team just had a, a team full of Insta guys. You you yeah. even gotta like forget about. Uh, Juice. AJ Price was AJ one of the Price. biggest shit talkers Juice, Juice I, to too. this day. The biggest too. shit talker I've ever met. Wow. Um, but so that's where it, that's where it initiated. It got to a point where now I'm getting like sensitive. I'm it's personal. <laughs> all right, watch. I'm being all star in three years. Solo like, in there. <laughs> yeah, solo. solo was talking crazy. He talking yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. So we we and had then, we had. And, then, and then my dog B Shaw like or uh, B Shaw the uh, worst the, the worst no no B Shaw too was the worst of the worst too but he wasn't there too yeah much. he wasn't there there but B Rush but yeah. B but but, but B Rush was like my dog like I knew like if shit got worse. If I was backed up in a corner, I know like, all right, B Rush is my dog. Like he gonna get me out of this. <laughs> he even like, damn, bro, like <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you killed our boy, bro. Why they just, <laughs> might get cut? Yeah. Like, like, it's like something damn, like that, bro. Like, but, yeah. so you just mentioned about watching Paul early in his career. What is it like now watching him where he is today? Because I think most people kind of overlook how difficult it is to stay at that high level. You know, now he's been an All Star what is it, eight times, seven times, eight, eight times, like. Talk about what you see now and how difficult that is to consistently be one of the best players in the NBA. So I go from that, right, to I go from like leaving him literally in Indiana and (laughs) I go to like Dallas and and Atlanta. I don't catch him until the playoffs with Cleveland. Mm -hmm. I don't see him again. Like I just the schedule didn't add up my, my tenure and he on fire. Like now he's beginning of Paul George, <laughs> and I check in the game like on, on like a suicide mission, like get him Tay. Yeah, and I'm like what? <laughs> and he's like yeah, yeah. like that. Oh, yeah, he that's like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he got like thirty. I'm he like this. yeah, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you remember all that, all that? Yeah, no, for real. Like <laughs> and he was a, he was so hot that we were blitzing uh, pin downs. I, I don't really see somebody like double mm-hmm. off a pin down, and. They throw me on Paul, like, you, you, you know him, right? Yeah, I know him, but like, it's like the Paul I know. Like, so he, he, had, he had it in his mind. He didn't forget, uh-huh. I get to see him near, but at that point in time, he wasn't as strong as he is now. He still was like, he, he's been evolving in skill-wise, strength, so then you get a little physical, but he's still shooting the lights out. Then now we come now, and like, now he's, just, he's a grown man. He's, just, he's, he's strong, he's like 240. Not only is he under control, but he's still growing as a basketball player as we speak. And and that's where that's where you see like all time numbers and efficiency because now he's learning how to think the game. He got he has all the attributes. He has the strength now. He he's seen all types of defenses. And now he's getting to like that Kobe part of it, of, of feeling the game and reading the game rather than just being dominant because like, like most people don't know that PG didn't know don't know how to not make a read because he's 6'9". If he decide he's gonna do something, you really can't stop it. Mm-hmm. Like, he can jump, he's long. He can come over half court and be like, you know, I'm gonna go between legs cross and a three. And even if you right there, he's 6'9", he could do it anyway. Mm-hmm. And it still could go in. So now he's feeling the game, feeling all like what his reads are, what, what, what defenses look like in a different way. So he's still evolving as a basketball player. So that's what I get to see as a coach. Mm-hmm. I wanna take you back to 2015, Dante. When you was on the Clipper roster, unfortunately, y'all had that three to one lead with the uh, Rockets, you know. Uh, but from top to bottom, the Clipper roster, y'all had talent everywhere. 
You know what I'm saying? But y'all just could never get over that hump. So I want to know what was the issue that caused that squad to go under underachieve? Immaturity. And I think that, and, and the people from that team have spoke about it before, but I was kind of like the outsider. So I got on that team late. Um, and from the door, it's just was you can see the conflict in personalities. And I think that's what makes our team special now is because we actually ro roll with each other. Like we, we vibe with each other mm -hmm. and everybody likes each other. But you see how a team can be um, kind of pushed back in, in, interiorly be, when, when, when moments like that happen, when you're, when you're up 3-1 and you see like people just come back on you. It's because you start separating in adversity. Um, we had all the talent. The only other team that I thought was on our level was like the Cavs that year when you had K-Love and, and Brian and, and Kyrie, like they were forming that. And CP, Blake, they were all playing well, but like you could just see the rift in personalities. Mm -hmm. DeAndre and Blake were, we called them the twins. They were on one side, CP was on the other side and it just didn't mix. Mm -hmm. So they could have probably been one of the, like the, the, the greatest teams in, in, in like, in, of, of that era, but it's just the personalities. They just couldn't get over some ma ma maturity humps um, to be able to play together and, to, and and to do it the right way. And we had that much time. Uh, we go up three one. You got that that animal in James Harden, mm -hmm. um, and one game just gave them a momentum. And then now you got to go to Houston and you got to deal with that atmosphere. Mm -hmm. James is on a tear, and then you just that just it just starts snowballing. And then once the adversity comes, then you kind of guys don't really rock with each other like that. So then like you, everybody just started going to their own corner and then it just starts getting worse and worse. So like we had the talent, we just didn't have the connectivity as a team. Um, and there was no way to get it because it's the personalities just didn't, didn't work well together. Mm -hmm. Talk, Cause you was there with, with, with a prime Blake Griffin. Mm -hmm. Like what was that like up close to see him? Like, cause you, we see shit in games, it's cold. <laughs> but you see shit in practice. Like, what what was that like being around him as a as as his his prime years? Well, phenomenal dude, number one, mm -hmm. personality wise, like just a great. He's funny, yeah. But yeah, Blake like, is awesome. Good, good, off the great, court, great dude on and off the court. Played extremely hard. Um, like in practice wise, like my, they try to like they, they try they, my first practice they try to like throw a lob to wait and put me in a basket. Like that's the stuff that they was doing. Mm -hmm. But he had a great vibe <laughs> and like him and DeAndre's friendship, they rode to practice together. Yeah. Like they were attached to the hip every day. And he was just, he was diligent at his craft. You understand he came in as an athlete. He would shoot every day and try to get better at, at, um, at like being a mid range shooter and then, try, and then also becoming a three point shooter. So he worked extremely hard and he just loved playing basketball, man. Like he just, he, he competed at a high level. He had a, he could make plays and 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 he had the brain to be able to like pick apart defenses and and be effective mm -hmm. without his athleticism. Um, so he was he was he was he was super dope to watch. Like not only just be an athlete, but also like to try and get better, um, try and study the game, and also like find ways to pick apart defenses. Like it was it, it, it was cool, man. Like I want to know that man. And training, being in LA like, too, like he was he his personality was big and, mm -hmm. and off the court. Like he was. He was great with the with the, with the fans and like with his personality off the floor. So great. he was he was a dope teammate. That mm -hmm. damn and Chris Paul practice all the time after practice doing them dunks, them no. lobs. And no, that's stuff. just what that's just what Chris has a gift to do. Like just to put the ball where it needs to go and to make people better. Um, Chris Chris would work before practice and break work after practice. Like mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying? Like they were like oil and water. They didn't. They just didn't. They just they just didn't mix. They just didn't fit. And Chris yeah. saw it one way, and Blake saw it another mm -hmm. way. Like and you just you just see like just these two personalities don't don't mix. Mm -hmm. But they but when it comes to game time, they make some moments. And and as a teammate, you you you're part of the moments, and then you just you you hear the conversations like. And they just and wow, they just threw a, a lob off the backboard. They still arguing about something, mm -hmm. and I, and that's just like like bro, it's, it wasn't even worth it. Mm -hmm. Now on our show, we like to keep it real, okay. And if you're a guest on our show, you got to keep it real with us, okay. Now I want to know, take you way back <laughs> when you got fined ten thousand dollars, yeah, when you bumped into yeah. Draymond Green doing his post game interview, mm -hmm. and I just want to know, just for me, because I'm nosy as hell. Did you intentionally mean that? And is that the reason why you got Draymond Green wilding out out here in the world today? You're going to blame it on me. <laughs> I got to blame it on somebody. So, okay, that's fine. <laughs> so Dray let's, let's Draymond, my sir. man, and I'm with all Draymond. Like, been, yeah. been on. Like, he, he's a necessary evil for them to be a dynasty. Right. And we, we cannot... 
we cannot speak about the Warriors without Draymond Green. Like his impact Facts. defensively, his personality defensively, his personality just like when times get tough for them, he's the one that pulls them out with his like mental toughness, his aggression. Like he helps them do everything that they've done. I just didn't like it from being on the other team. And I felt we got bullied that game and he was the biggest bully. And all I know is bullies get bullied. And I, I didn't get a chance to get in that game. So I was hot. Mm. I watched it for 48 minutes. I was <laughs> mad. He talking crazy. They ain't saying nothing back. Yeah. He bullying them. And I was, I was mad, bro. And, and So what and you said I, is you meant it. I, I did, but I didn't. You meant it. I did, but I didn't. We got to keep it and real Jack, in the show Jack, now. Jack, keep I'm, it real. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it a buck. Okay. I had the animosity. And you remember in the old stadium in, um, in Oakland, one way in, one way out. Mm -hmm. So- like we, you got to see each other, and they had ju and we the far bench, and they had just they had the celebration cheerleaders on, and we got punked, and I'm mad, and he doing an interview, and I'm with DJ, and me and DJ play around a lot. Like DJ's a big ass kid, and I, I grabbed DJ. DJ was hot too, and I was like, I should just bump this. I should just bump this. <laughs> I, should, I just hit, I just hit him. Got I can back hear to DJ. Him. You won't. He said, like, he like, nah, say, chill, 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 right. <laughs> I just running dead over while you're doing the interview. <laughs> Chill, Taylor. Like, come on, man. Ain't that serious? I got a smile out of DJ. But then, like, you know how you walking with some you, you walking with the homie, right? And y'all, y'all walking in step and y'all collide. Well, my my dumb ass, the fact that I'm already thinking it, DJ with them big shoulders, he bumped, he bumped me, I bumped him. <laughs> and DJ like, oh, oh nigga, you did you bumped him, did you? You bumped him, did you? Like, yeah, I did, man. So what? I don't care. I yeah. meant I was gonna do it anyway. Yeah. So I meant to, but I didn't do it on purpose. But I, I wanted to smoke anyway. And then when he bumped me, yeah, I I, I bumped him. I wasn't going to if I hit DJ. Yeah. I, like I, hit the, and then, I like the honesty. But, but then after, I like the honesty. After that, it. he's like, did you bump me? I was like, yeah, I, did. I, yeah, I think I did. <laughs> All right, whatever. Like, it's, it's whatever. I didn't even know about this moment. So the league caught it and then no. This is where I'm about to knock Draymond out. So Draymond get bumped, <laughs> take the bump, look, see it, and was like, all right. It was on ABC. Yeah. My, I'm, I'm nuts. So I, like, <laughs> ABC is watching Everybody it. And watching. I come to the camera, like, boom, bumping. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm, I'm looking stupid, <laughs> right? And Draymond was like, all right. So the media comes in and it's like, did you, did you mean to bump Draymond or you bump Draymond? I was like, whatever. Um, and they had asked Draymond, and Draymond said, you know what, I ain't gonna, I ain't, I'm not gonna talk about this to the press. When I get on camera, I'm gonna talk about it. Yeah. And that's how I got fined. Because he was like, yeah, he bumped me, but so what? Woo, woo. Then they go back to the film and, and look at it like, yeah. Film. So yeah, so he, he wouldn't talk to like the press, press. Like, he wouldn't talk about things. Like, I'm only gonna talk about that when, we, when I get on camera. Yeah. And then that's how I get fined. So he got funny. me fined. But, Have y'all ever talked about it again since y'all, since, since it happened? Nah, he know what it was. like. You're a bully, and I'm, I'm a <laughs> bully. I gotta see that. He, 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 he kind of respected like it. Pat Bev, but was that, it? Was, that was his young, it was his young bully year. Was, so like, nothing was worse than yeah, the like Pat it wasn't Bev as bad because I, I I can't think of that moment, but it wasn't as bad as Pat Bev going up and shoving Chris like that, right? Nah, that was that was burnt. Yeah, there, there's nothing. <laughs> Pat lost it. Yeah, and Pat even said he lost it for a minute. Like Pat just at the timeout, he lost it. And I, it, it probably that's what all the time I was on. If I was on the court, I may have had a Pat bad moment. Yeah. I was just I was a sore loser. They was they was hot. They was rolling, and I wanted smoke. And I ain't, and Doc ain't put me in, so like I gotta find a way to get some smoke. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I love the honesty. I, I want I wanted some action. I love it. Uh, we want to we I want to move it along. 2016 year, right? You're on the other side now of a three one <laughs> comeback. Mm -hmm. You're with Cleveland. You guys are down three one to the 73 win Golden State Warriors. Steph and and Clay and Draymond, right? Even Iguodala, great, great team, great team. What was y'all belief system at that moment? Because you hear the stories, Brian, y'all took some money, y'all put the money up in the ceiling, said we're going to come back for that. Was that during that, that playoff run, mm -hmm. that, that finals run? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But talk to us about that mindset of battling back, being down 3-1, where people say it can't be done and it won't be done. Y'all facing that adversity. That adversity, um, I was ultra confident Prior to that, we were, I think, I want to say, in, a, in the conference finals, I had went over to T. Lou's house and he was working on his scout, but he was peeping like the Golden State. And he was like, I found a way how we going to beat Golden State. I was like, we ain't finished this one. He's like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah we, we, we locked into this, but like, I found how are we going to beat him. He had his game plan, starting his game plan for then, for, for Golden State at that point in time. And he broke it down into two things like, um, 
when Draymond is pushing the ball, like his primary role is to find shooters. He doesn't finish well at the rim. So that's part of our game plan and how we going to guard splits. Mm -hmm. We do these two things, we going to beat them. I'm trying to tell you, we going to beat them. Like, all right, cool. So we get into that series and that was our game plan. And we could look over the tape and see that like we would do it for 46 minutes and we'd be up. And then that two minute breakdown, and then that's how they win the game. Mm -hmm. Or we do it for 38 minutes and we were up. And that, that, that was the brain. That, that was those two game plan mistakes. If we could do these two things the way we're supposed to, on top of what we do already, mm -hmm. we're going to win. We're going to win. So you got the ultra competitive Bron, who, like, I told this story before though, but like, we were, we were, in, we were in Golden State and we eat and we always eat dinner to, like as a, just as a teammates before. And Brian was like, yeah, I'll be right back. <laughs> Where you going? <laughs> Brian go to Four Seasons um, Health Club and start getting on the first climber. Like right before game, is it five, six? Mm -hmm. Like he go, I got to simulate my first quarter. What? Mm -hmm. Like he come back sweating, eat his meal. Like he was locked in. Yeah. Kai on a whole nother level. Like we, were, we weren't rattled because we knew it was game plan mistakes. Mm -hmm. If you break it down on the film, once we get those, we just take it game by game, game plan mistakes. We get those done. We got our first one and we, and we did it 48 minutes. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, just, just, just watch and repeat. Like mm -hmm. just, just do it again. And we, and we did it again. Didn't like, I say this at the beginning him. of the show? Damn. I said at the beginning Sorry. of the show. That's a fine. Yeah. I didn't, That's a fine. I thought it was off, bro. Him. My bad, bro. I yelled it out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, that's what happened in the locker room, bro. Right, like when man. somebody phone go off in the middle of the game, yeah, playing my it, 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 it go, it go right. I don't even, oh. oh boy, WTF! <laughs> <laughs> it was such a good story too. Yeah. You, know, you got to get back into it. <laughs> no, nah, but it, it boiled all the way down to just game plan. Like just you win one game, all right, let's just do it again, mm -hmm. and just take all, all the noise. That whole thing that I even said it's two, two, two before like. The social media thing, like when Brian go dark, he don't see all all the noise mm -hmm. of what everybody's saying or the numbers or mm -hmm. like he's dark. He's not watching news. He's not watching ESPN. He dark to all that. So it's just basketball and what we got to get done. Mm -hmm. And then Kai was playing at an all time level. Brian was playing at an all time level. Our our complimentary players were all locked in, and you just took one game in itself. And then Draymond got. <clears throat> Got kicked out of the other one, and we took another game. Mm -hmm. And then at that point in time, the momentum's in your favor. Right. They're just trying not to lose. They're not trying to win. They're just trying not to lose. And it got real shaky. And then you find yourself on Father's Day, a 12 o'clock game in Golden State for the NBA championship. Like, it's, the, it's, it's you could never. Couldn't like, script you, it you, any you, better right. than that. Huh? It, it, it was like the dopest thing in the world. And their backs are against the wall because they've been down 3 1. Like, mm -hmm. all the momentum's in our favor. We, once you what you did what you're supposed to made it three two and I got a, I got in I got in game six to be able to help because you know me as a teammate like I'm pointing things out defensively it makes Bron so dope as a um as a defender I had to guard Bron a lot so I could give him things like they guarding you like this you just gotta like get away won't he would take the information implement it right there which is you taking the the fifteenth man's information and on the spot implement it it's wild. He's so locked in, like bro. It just, it just, it was, it was stuff you make a movies mm -hmm. about. It was dope. Mm -hmm. Dante, you were you part of some real big in Cleveland forever, because you know Cleveland sports had a, the biggest droughts in sports history with their teams over there. Right. You know, so in 2016 is when they got their first title, mm -hmm. and I just want to know since it was their first, uh, the first to get it out there in the city. What, what the, what the hell was that parade like? Winning the championship for the city, man. Paul knows how I feel about the city of Cleveland. Like, I, I, they they hold a place forever in my heart. It's one of the like in one of the best cities I've ever played in. Genuine people care about their sports. It was so wild that there were no guardrails, and I got pictures of like <laughs> my sons in like the back of the the whatever it is, and people just touching you, like just just want to touch your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Like you're in the mix. There were no, the people were just in they the street and cars rails. are moving down the street and they just like, that's, it's just supreme love walking down the street. Mm -hmm. wow. If you look at all parades, there's guardrails, they're behind right. the rails, yeah. they're like, they made the yeah. blockades. Yeah. No, they weren't prepared for it. So it was just cars going down the street in, in the middle yeah. of the crowd. A couple of police are like, get back. No, whatever, <laughs> shut up. Like, yeah. 
and just showing love, giving high fives. Like it was, it was, it was super dope. It took way longer than it was supposed to to get get through the crowd because of that. And the city was just like people on walls, people in parking structures on the wall, dude hanging on a light post. Like it was <laughs> wild, bro. Like it was, it was some, one of the best times of my life, man. It was hot. Everybody got their shirts off. Jr. doing his doing I his remember thing. That. That's the birth of uh, Henny. Henny. Henny, Henny Jr. Huh? Henny Jr. But Jr. Don't even drink. Don't Henny. even drink. Like, That's what wild. was funny like, about. Bro. I want to know too. How don't even a, drink. How do a parade? Like when y'all win the championship, and you do the parade. Like what do y'all do that whole day as a team? Like it's the y'all got the parade. That's all we get to see. But what else y'all do? It's like a seven a.m. The way I remember it was, um, it was a, we had, we went to Vegas after we won. So we twelve o'clock game. You do all the photos and stuff. You probably on a plane at like seven. Go to Vegas, party, get back the next day, maybe three four o'clock. Get back to Cleveland. Get back to Cleveland. So the fans is out there. So that's another whole party. You may try to catch up on some sleep. Um, you had a day, and then I, I went out with like with, with, with my little brother. Um, eight cities on fire. Like I'll never pay for a drink or a meal ever in Cleveland in right now ever in life. So like <laughs> just walking around and they, and they losing their minds. You see them start trying to prepare for the parade. And then I live downtown at the nine. So they were like, you got to get to the practice facility by like seven, eight a.m. to get prepared. Cause we, we took our um, buses and stuff from there to start it, which is like 15 minutes out. So we had, to, I did, I had to get through police escort to get through the people that were coming from all parts of Ohio just to be a part of this. Um, got there, started like 8 a.m. And we were just eating with the families and stuff, got in our vehicles. And then we look up and it's like 5, 6 p.m. And you ain't slept in two, three days and you've been out in the sun and you drink a champagne and all that. Like you just, yeah. you just, you just trying to make it through. Right. And it, you got the, the the people make the vibe. So like even if you you on fumes, the people of the city like they so thankful for that w- w- what we brought to that city. Like it just it just it was one them something I never. Well, heard. you got a LA one coming up soon. Yeah. Got to got to got experience that. It'd be different. Hey, we got a LA yeah. one coming oh, up soon. Be done, right. It, 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 it'd be different because. Our fans are different than the Laker fans. They 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 have a, a, an amazing fan base, but it'll be a different vibe to it. We mm-hmm. got a we got a different set of people who believe in us. I just mm-hmm. think the Clippers will probably have just because they never ever won a championship. They would probably have the biggest parade ever in that lake. I just think it just I just think the Laker fans will be Clipper fans that day because mm-hmm. it's L A. Yeah, and, and it's just, LA come it's out, gonna yeah. it's gonna be the biggest thing. So. Y'all get us that this this year, please. I mean, that's the goal. Yeah, I mean, we locked in. So after after y'all win it, mm-hmm. y'all y'all bring it back, right? Now the Warriors upgrade, adding KD to the to the team, right? So now you add in top two at the time NBA player in the league, right? What was that like? How crazy was that when y'all matched up in a, with them that next season in the finals? Y'all had the same belief, like we can get them again. What KD posed this new threat? <laughs> like what's going through what's what's going through uh, y'all y'all mind at, at this moment? It was tricky, right? <laughs> and tricky. Why I say tricky because they just played with a pace to where you just couldn't get your matchup. So mm-hmm. let's say Bron and KD matched up, but like Bron and KD can't never get matched up because they they out the basket playing so, so fast. So while Bron is like in scoring mode, like by the time Bron score. They outlet it and KD at half court. Bron is like in mm-hmm. track mode, track me mode. So like it's it's so tough to like get to your game plan. So KD just changed the outlook of it because now you're cross matched all over the board. Mm-hmm. It was Harrison Barnes. Now it's KD. KD down there scoring in the moments where you think you got him. Now you got one of like the best ISO scorer in the game at that point in time. Now you where you may have done the game plan stuff. Now it's just now. KD in ISO mode, mm-hmm. and he make big shots, big shots, and then it's just a it's a it's a total different beast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you we 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 didn't have an answer, obviously, <laughs> at that point in time for that because it's just KD makes him yeah. it just magnifies the talent. The year before we had we we did have we had crazy belief, and we knew what we had to do. Um, it's just it was a different team, and we have respect for knowing that it's a different team. So it's not like like. We didn't carry it over like, well, we've been down 3-1 before. Yeah, we, we we threw that out there when we <laughs> went down. But <laughs> it's just like, it's just a lot. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's just different. And to shock the world with, a, with, with this different offensive set of talent, 
is going to be very hard. We cannot get into a hole. So yeah, we had the belief in the first first year that we can we can figure this out. It's just that it just it just changed the dynamic. So that's where, like I think P had told this, we went back. We we lost it right, and and we sit in the room and we licking our wounds and we hot and, and we had to stay the night after, after we lost it. And I think um in, in in the bay, and and Bron and Kai in the room. And it's like ah right, yeah they want to add that. We got to go get something. We got to get something else. We got to mm-hmm. get. Another wing, because they didn't they didn't up to Annie, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh man, Jimmy Butler, uh, I don't know if we could get. Uh, we need a shutdown corner. I'm like, and I'm in the back, like, PG, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, but like, don't nobody know him. That's my man. Like, and in the back, like, they going on like, PG would be dope. I'm like, yeah, I'm a free agent, so like, I could call him. Like, yeah. that's that's my man. Like, he gonna pick up, <laughs> yeah. right? And at that point in time, I'm texting him though. Like, I'm like PG, what's up, baby? Yeah. You happy? <laughs> he like, ah, oh, bro, like, I think I'm gonna try. And I'm like, but bro, you ain't seen these finals. These yeah. finals is where it's at. And he like, I know, bro, but I think I'm a um, I think I'm I think I'm gonna stay, right? And then so we go, we start talking about all that. And I'm like, all right, I'm a, I'm gonna work on PG. Cause I think, I think we could we could make that work. And then PG hit me like two, three days later. He's like, bro, what was you talking about? <laughs> and I'm like, well, okay, this is what the scenario is. We um like that whole stuff with Kyrie broke out and like Kyrie, not not that he wanted out, but we I, I don't remember exactly how it was, but we knew that we were gonna upgrade our talent and and change the what 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 we had. And PG was like, but I ain't never really like, like I competed against him, I ain't never really spoke to Bron. I was like, y'all would be perfect. Mm-hmm. Like, Bron's a great dude, you good people. Like, people didn't know the type of person that PG is. And we all in this room know that like, that's a dope human being. So like, they would work well together. I was like, bro, honestly and truthfully, there's some things that you could learn from Bron. Like, just cause you're you're one of them ones, but like you you climb and you still got stuff to climb. Mm-hmm. And getting you to the finals, I was, I was, uh, I was selling like shoe sales, mm-hmm. like, all this stuff is going to yeah. increase. Like, yo, <laughs> now nah, he, he was selling like a motherfucker. I, I he was, was selling, selling like, he I, was selling Cleveland. Like, bro, you I, don't, uh, all the shit he was bro, talking bro, about, listen, you don't know. Cleveland been, is I've actually been, dope. I'm, I'm like, in the Indy, what? right? And it's just like, you got two dope human beings and you want to connect them. It's like, if you got a, a dope homegirl and a dope homeboy, you're like, yo, they, y'all got to, they, they got to work together. And I was like, they y'all both super dope human beings. Y'all got to play together. You have no choice. Mm-hmm. That would be great. It, and and, the, and, and it, the deal almost went down. Like I didn't I didn't know how serious it was, or I didn't know that it could actually you know come to life. But after the meeting, we went to his crib, we chopped it up. He like, man, I'm a like. He sold it to me. Brian sold it to me. Like, man, I'm a, we're gonna try to make it happen. Like, yeah. So I'm you like, could oh, almost play with him twice, Bunky. At the end of the day, like, I'm 24, 25 years old. Like, I'm still a fan of Brian. Like, he, right, he's right. a basketball lover. Like, I, PG I'm still love. a fan of yeah. like of Brian. Like, you know what I mean? If the, regardless of the battles we've had, like, I still look at, at him. And like, Brian looking at it like that's Brian. He's a fan of you. No, he's a, he, you he, a ball. And honestly, and truly, he's a fan. Brian was a fan of PG too, and it, like they don't know it. And it's like, ding dong, like, Ron, I'm coming over. Ding dong, it's, it's me and PG. Let's go have some lunch in the backyard. Yeah. And we just chopped it up. And then you get to see two people like on the same trajectory of like greatness. Like we don't, we don't get that much as basketball players. Yeah. Like just, will, just, just them will, two having lunch. Aside from that, that, that meeting alone, cause you know, Bron, chef, would after like, that, like, yo, I need to change my game. You change my stuff. You guys, you, you saw good wine. Yeah, good wine. You saw you saw him walking out. This, this, like, this, this is a different lifestyle. Like, wow, <laughs> yo, Aaron, I need a chef, dog. You look up some chefs. Like, <laughs> you my whole life things. changed after that, yeah, bro. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> and even before, like, well, I, I went to the house earlier. Bron's playing like two K on the yeah. couch, like in the living room. Boop. Right, I'm gonna get PG and grab him. Yeah. All right, whatever. Like. Give me, give me some. Let's get, let's get some of that good. What's the name? And and and, and whatever we ate that day. Yeah. And, and PT looking around that joint like, yo. It was in. It, you know, it was. It was. I ain't gonna give a location, but I'm. I'm in that 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 same area because mm. of of that. Did that y'all moment. play the two K that day? Nah, nah. We <laughs> just had play? lunch and then uh, you know we got up out the way, but it was it was more so just to kind of because I you know I, I don't I I knew him a little bit because. You know, background, we went to China together. Um, my first tour with Nike was with Bron. 
Brian, Rudy Gay, um, some of the SB Nike guys, skateboard Nike guys, um, and who else? LaDainian Thomason, dope, mm. dope. And Amari, Amari Stoudemire as well. So it was a dope, like for me to be a young guy, getting introduced to like the guys, and Brian was was the big homie taking me, showing me around. Um, so I, I got to know him on a on a on a more of a personal level then, but you know it was more of a personal level when I went to his crib. So it was it was a dope experience. But but yeah, I I, I mean a lot Can't of a lot of stuff I do now crib. is definitely is implemented uh, from him. Can, can you share a little bit? Because I know Dante had his sales pitch to you, but when you talked with LeBron, can you share a little bit more about exactly? what LeBron was pitching you? Was it similar to what he was? Or was there any anything that you took from that conversation that maybe stuck out to you that you could share? Honestly, I don't, to be honest, I don't remember much of the convo. He wasn't selling. It wasn't, yeah. It wasn't I was even, selling. I was the seller. I was right. Brian, I don't even think I was he was really Are you coming or not? <laughs> I, I don't even think he no, really Brian talked like, basketball like that. It was more cool. so just like vibing, like, yeah. you know, it'll pee, like, what you, like, what you into? Like, what, like, house, yeah. summer, house train? Like, it was more on that level. Mm. It wasn't really, like, pitching like yo I think you'll be great with us this is it was just more so like just connecting like you know as as boys I think the conversation but so P's reservation was like does like is it could it work mm -hmm. and I was like not nah, y'all personalities match like y'all both cool y'all both chill family oriented like so like you just got to get in the same room and just like does, does he even like want somebody like me I was like bro he wants to give information he wants to share more than you think he does like he He's himself, but he doesn't have, he doesn't, he's not worried about somebody overshadowing him. Like we can, we can do this together. He mm -hmm. has that mindset. So that's what I was just trying to put two people in a room together just to see like, just show them that they vibe together. Cause I know both, both of them really well. Mm -hmm. so he wasn't selling. Hey, well, there you have it. <laughs> you, we took up a lot of your time, brother. We appreciate you on the set of podcast, P. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We want to give a special Dante. shout out to Tanner. Mm -hmm. Give a special shout out to Tanner, his oldest son playing at Campbell Hall. Come on, I'm out of here. Big Hooper. But uh, yeah, we appreciate you, brother. Of course, appreciate you. Thank y'all for having me, man. I, I, I'm a big fan of y'all. I get to watch this, man. Y'all growing. It's, it's dope. Thank you, there sir. You have it. We appreciate hey, it. Hey, hey, he can stop saying I've been lying on him. He, he finally, on cleared, me on the he podcast, finally came to clear his <laughs> name. Oh, you, you, name. you want to do it? <laughs> nah, man. I keep getting these, these, these snippets of stories and he keep lying on me about certain stuff. So at least, at least I get you to clear You got to be dunked name. on by Gordon Hayward, I did not do it. it. I did not do it. First of all, I did, it was not my fault. I didn't want to get a foul. He tried to be the hero. He got dunked on. It's my fault. <laughs> <laughs>